Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage. Now, like the third Hobbit movie, which we've come back around to, Mason, let's make this a really strong opening and then just, I don't know, nothing. We'll do like two good minutes. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. just an extended kind of waffle. Maybe we'll bring in some characters that aren't normally in these videos, you know, That'd some great. guest hosts. Yeah, for sure. And people are like, what's this? What's, what's happening? Just slap together some kind of narrative. We'll bring in some characters that get a lot of screen time, but they don't have an arc. Oh, yeah. For some reason, they're just in it for a bit and then they're gone. <laughs> uh, we could all get a nemesis, that, like our own individual nemesis that's just a vague guy. Okay. Like we could get an, an orc each. All right, all right. Just a weirdly mutilated orc that comes at us and you're like, did we switch orcs a minute ago? Or? <laughs> was this the orc I was fighting in the previous movie? It's uh, a long movie, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not. Isn't it? Well, it's the shortest of these three. I don't mean as compared to, I mean, as compared to other movies. Well, not nowadays, basically. This movie could have been wrapped up in a webisode. This this trilogy. <laughs> it could have just been delivered to everybody's phones like that U2 album. But you know what? The first 10 minutes of this... <laughs> Anyway, leave a like. The opening action sequence with Smog, and look, I, I forgot he doesn't use the big tower. I think last video I was like, oh, I wonder if he uses the big tower that they've got. Oh, I wonder if that big tower's gonna come back. No, he uses his son as to fire sure. an arrow at the dragon. A more normal thing. A more normal thing. I think that's so cool and so great. And would serve as a perfect finale to the second movie. <laughs> yeah. and there should have been two movies and then no more movie. But you're right. Now, now the last couple of weeks you've been banging on about how you read a book. You read The Hobbit. Is this how The Hobbit ends? Yeah. Like second act ends with the, the, the dragon and then they just mill around for a while? <laughs> well, this, this movie's called The Battle of the Five Armies. And you'd be like, that might be a bit thrilling. It's not, is it? <laughs> no, not it took really. So long, I'm like, are they sure there's gonna be five armies? Oh, here's a question for you. Orcs. Yep, that's what I was gonna ask. Dwarves? We... Yeah, orcs, dwarves. Elves? Yep. The, the townsfolk? Yep, the men's. Is there, an, is there another set of humans? Well, there's different... Those big worms that show up? <laughs> Do they count as an army? No, Mason. Depending on what version or who you believe and whatever, <laughs> uh, it's the eagles are the fifth one. Oh. And there's also some people who say the orcs are actually in the book. It's like it's two different armies. There's different oh. schools of thought. And also in the book, mm -hmm. which uh, I don't know if you mentioned it or I mentioned it, but I have read it. Mm -hmm. Frodo, Bilbo... The guy. Yeah, the main guy, sure. The main guy. Well, sort of the main. He He's was not, the main guy. He was the main he? guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> in this one, we've got a couple of main guys. Yeah. We'll get to the other main guys. But if you sure. were going to say something about Frodo or Bilbo? Yeah, he gets knocked out. Mm. So you don't see any of the battle. And he yeah. does get knocked out in this, but we still see a bunch of stuff happen because mm. there's a bunch of battle. He gets knocked out. And, and there's then, cameramen. And there's cameramen. film all of it. Exactly. But in this, we have two other... We have we have a bunch of other main characters. We have... We, Thorin comes to the fold again because he's gone... He's gone treasure mad. Yep. And he's got to get over that by getting over it. He's, he's Having just... a bit of a think and a little dream. Yeah, I like a that. A little golden dream. And then he's like, no, nah, I'm over this. Yeah, he borrowed me, is it? Yeah. And we've got another main character in that weird boogity guy from the previous one. You know, the guy, he's like, oh. Yeah. Oh, the worm tongue guy. Yeah. Uh, that guy. And he's all like, my, my eyebrows touch. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Evans is going to be like, hey, go and do this. And then I'm going to subtly betray him. And then he's going to be like, well, actually do this. And I'm going to subtly betray him again. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, I certainly was like, is this guy going to get his comeuppance? Or when's he going to become a hero? Well, neither. No, no, he doesn't. <laughs> Nothing happens with this guy. Well, not in this version. In the extended version, he gets like thrown from a catapult or something. Well, that's fine. Like his greed takes over. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, yeah, you mentioned Thorin. Uh, he's, he's drunk. He's just like, oh, Jesus. I love gold and I think I've got a headache. I don't know. <laughs> He's just not having a good time of it. Mm -hmm. But no, to answer your question from a bit back, like, I guess, The Return of the King, there's a bunch of stuff that does happen in the book. Mm -hmm. After the dragon is killed, there's a bit of interplay between, like, there's the Arkenstone stuff mm -hmm. and the armies turn up and there's a bit of a battle which we don't see and then they all walk home and whatever. Various orcs and goblins and, and dwarves die and then it, they have a big wrap-up and... Bilbo goes home and he goes... I was, I was sad when some of the, the dwarves died. Which ones? I don't know. Name them. I don't know, I can't and I won't. <laughs> <laughs> the sort of blonde one, and then maybe another sort of blonde one. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. the, like, the GQ model one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was That's... in love with Evangeline Lilly. I do want to talk about that, Mason. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, I also want to talk about how during the filming of this, and I think we talked about this in the first video, which feels like a million years ago, Mason, when we started watching these movies, this was shut down. Peter Jackson was like, 
I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how this action sequence is going to work or any of this is going to play out. There's no previs. I haven't written anything down. I look in various states of disheveled during the shooting of this. I've drawn I've drawn a diagram of the battle, but it's just a roundabout and all the armies <laughs> are at different points in the roundabout and who goes first? And they don't have roundabouts in the US, so they'd be confused. They've got stop signs and street lights and traffic altercations, I assume. <gasps> right. So yeah, they, he closed it down. He was just like, we're shutting it down. I need to figure this out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, apparently, a lot of this is also from, like, the expanded history of Middle Earth and maybe okay. some stuff from Return of the King, the, the book as well. So they're just so they're just like, what have we got? Oh, God, okay. Um, can we put Legolas in this? I guess he could have been there, I guess. Can you do that weird thing where he, he video games up those falling falling steps and whatever? Does a little defying gravity. I mean, I get it. They're, they're, the elves are fleet of foot and yeah. probably have hollow bones or something. There's a moment in, I think, first Lord of the Rings, Lord of the mm -hmm. Rings 1, mm -hmm. where they're all, like, trudging through snow and uh -huh. he's just walking on top of it. He's like, oh, I've been enough. And I'm sure. not cold. And I'm not cold. I think that's a thing I can do as well, not be cold. Uh, Billy Connolly's there. He's mm. like, hello, I'm not real. I'm a CGI man or whatever. Was he ever on set? Billy yes. He was. So here's the thing, right? Yes. They got him in makeup. Okay. They filmed it all. And then what the, the official explanation for this, and this is obviously bullshit, is that they thought the Billy Connollyisms of it all got lost in the makeup. Oh, I see. So to bring more of him to the forefront. They ping ponged all his face. <laughs> oh, maybe. I don't mm. even know if they did that. But he looks like the way that how, you know, occasionally you'll hit a CGI orc. He just looks different. He just looks way too different than the others. I don't. He looks like Understand. some kind of supporting character in the most recent God of War game. Oh, He okay. just looks like a guy who'll maybe sell you a shield or something. Oh, okay. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. But whilst all this be happening, there's five armies, and I'm sure people have got the explanation for what officially the five armies are, Mason. Because <laughs> I don't know if you know this, Mason, there's a lot of discourse around Middle Earth at the moment. A lot of people have really fascinating opinions that I'm interested in. Oh, yeah, you're interested yeah, in Yeah, I peep, love it. People should leave them in the comments, I reckon, <laughs> or tweet at you, maybe. Definitely. Mm. Uh, but there's a side mission going on. Not me, though, because I agree with them. <laughs> okay. So whatever, you, whatever you're going to say, I agree. <laughs> Even the racist stuff? <sighs> no, not the racist <laughs> stuff. Anyways, <laughs> on the side quest, Mason, we get basically some original trilogy characters mm -hmm. like Christopher Lee pinwheeling about fighting some ghosts. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, so that's they got his. Uh, they got, I presume they got his uh, Star Wars prequel like action figure, <laughs> yep, like character model, and they're just like have him do some flips. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that's the, right. the if I may, the um, the Wikipedia page for this uh, for this film says uh, in the battle between these these heroes and, and Sauron, it says. Galadriel defeats him in a duel of wills. Yeah. Does she? Or does she just stand up and point? Yeah, she goes, I'm the girl from the ring now! Ah, my hair's wet. I don't know how it works, but she sort of does it in the other movies. Oh, like a battle of wills. Yeah, yeah. in a way, it's a mm. battle of wills, isn't it? And Christopher Lee's like, don't worry, I'll take care of this. I'm going to follow up with this. I'll just, I'm just going to see. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see what don't happens. Don't mind me, wink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, now you would know, James, of course, because you've read the book The Hobbit. Yeah, love it. Does he then go and become corrupted by evil or was he always evil in the first place? No, he does get corrupted. Interesting. And that's why when Gandalf turns up and he's like, I'm Christopher Lee now, bitch. I'll kill you. I'm the white wizard now. What do you think of that? Mm. So, yeah. So he, he was originally supposed to be a good guy, but wizards like all things in... Middle Earth, they have free will. You know what That's I mean? Terrific. They can choose to be evil if they if they are so inclined, which Christopher Lee did. That's great. <laughs> you know what else is free will, Mason? What's that? You're a big Lee Pace looking elf, and yet you, you're riding a big elk, and he beheads six orcs at once. Do you remember that? I do remember That's that. That's a cool yeah. thing that he does. Mm -hmm. And another th cool thing that he does is, is come around on a love story. He's like, I hate loving. Don't do it. Don't do it. I don't want to see any of that. Then at the end, he's like, Nah, loves. It's all right. I mean, yeah. he's dead now, so yeah, cool. I like it. Yeah, I would have. I would have allowed this actually. <laughs> now that now that it cannot possibly go forward, I think it's it's cool. Apparently, the love story. Don't go look at any other dwarves, though. <laughs> I don't know if I'd think that was cool. You'd never find one this pretty, by the mm, way. That's Just right. FYI, I've yeah. seen a lot of them. Ugly as hell. Yeah, this guy's a solid seven. That's as good as you'll ever get <laughs> in the dwarf realm. <laughs> but apparently, uh, this whole love story thing was a studio note. Yeah, of course. So, like, we need something to... Well, didn't Evangeline Lilly sign on to this trilogy because she was assured that she wouldn't just be given, a, like, a romantic foil kind I of role? I think that's yeah. right, actually, yeah. Yeah, she but was like, I'm, I'm going to be in this to be a warrior. Yep. I don't want to have a, a romantic subplot 
sort of just shoehorned in. And now you, you've you signed on and you have no real say in this <laughs> because the machine will destroy us all if we if we don't go along yep, with this. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, you get, you're going to have to have a boyfriend. <laughs> but Mason, mm-hmm. at least it was real. Do you remember they all agree it was real? They all the love it was, was real. real. The love was real, yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's really good stuff. Now, here's something that's uh, come up a few times in these movies and go people on. take great umbrage with it. Uh, so the Uruk High in the original Lord of the Rings, and I've said that right. They're like the orcs, but are bigger and scarier. Yeah, and they're like mixed with men. Okay. They're a big deal, right? Sure. Because they've been mixing with men. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, uh, sure. And so they're bigger, they're stronger, they're fleet of foot, Mason. Of course. And also they can move in sunlight. And that's a big deal because most orcs, they squirrel away in caves, and, you know, and then during the, the daytime they scatter. Whereas these movies, when does the battle take place? That's a great question. Winter. I mean, yeah. On but account of all the snow. What time of day? Yeah. I mean, just day, I yeah, guess. Yeah, just day. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a little kind of like, why is this happening? Why are there so many orcs out in the sunlight? Now, I looked into this. Go on, yes. I like to. I like my Middle Earth lore, and I like people correcting me on things. You sure do. But apparently, it's they can go out in sunlight, but they really just don't like it, and they get really disorientated and whatever. So considering all of that... Oh, what a, what a brilliant piece of continuity from <laughs> Tolkien there. <laughs> no, I just, just don't like it. <laughs> Not a fan, really. Yeah. I, I will say this though, you know, yeah. I like Thorin's arc if he just gets over it, but then he has a big fight, mm-hmm, sure. and I don't mind that fight with the with the white orc and it's trying to hit him with the thing or whatever. And you know, they're balancing on the ice, and he just picks up that rock and he's like, "Here you go," you know, "Is this rock, this rock, this rock. idiot?" Yeah. Then sure. he goes through the thing, and what, how does he jump out of the water? It's neither here nor there. That's mm. not important. Mm. But I think that whole thing is like it's a pretty, it's a pretty, it's a clever thing to sequence. do. Throw him the rock, followed by the dumbest thing you could possibly do, which is just like stand over that orc that's under the water and be like. <laughs> No way he could kick off the bottom there, I reckon. Nah. I reckon this ice is too thick for him to stab me through the ice into the foot. I think. <laughs> I'm pretty confident about that. So that's good. But the ending of this, though, uh, apparently they wanted uh, Vigo Mortensen to show up as Aragon, right? Because there's a hint towards him when they say, like, hey, go and see Aragon, Legolas. Can you go and see Aragon to connect uh, sure, this, sure. these movies to the next mm. movies? Uh, Isn't he a man, though? Yeah, he's a man, but he lives a really long time. In Lord of the Rings, okay. he's like 80-something years old or whatever. Oh, he looks great. Yeah, he does look great. You're mm-hmm. right. But he had the, the sense to be like, these obviously aren't very good and I don't want to do it. Really? Not even for like one second? He doesn't really do that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. I mean, think of the things he's done post Lord of the Rings. He did the horse race desert movie. <laughs> sure. And he's done like some Eastern European gangster movies or sure, whatever. Sure, sure, sure. But he's mostly just like... Just not doing any of that. Great. I think he Good just made him. a bunch of money on Lord of the Rings and just went, I'm just going to hang back, I think. Does this mean I have to get another tattoo? <laughs> if I come in and do this one scene in The Hobbit, are you going to make me get another tattoo? Because I'm not I'm, into that. Mm. Yeah. Of course, we get the moment where Ian McKellen clears a pipe for a really long time. Did you see that bit? No. He sits next to Frodo or Bilbo and he's just like, <laughs> How did you not see this? I guess I disassociated. It's like a guess, minute long. No, I think I, I think my brain disappeared from my body for a while there. This is a long movie, James. I know you said it's not long, but I don't believe you. <laughs> this movie went forever. But apparently also, for this scene that you definitely remember, mm. uh, they did have some dialogue, but it was like Ian McCallan's last scene and Peter Jackson was just like, let's just have them sit down and just have a moment of silence so we can all think about what we've done here. <laughs> uh, and I, I, I enjoy the bit, I guess, where at the end of the movie... Ian McCallan bangs on the door and he's like, get out here, we're doing Lord of the Rings. Sure, yeah. Get your boots. Oh, you don't wear boots. I don't know. (laughs) Get a satchel or whatever. Yeah. Get your ring. I know you didn't lose the (laughs) ring. I know. Not stupid. (laughs) You stupid little hobbit. Lost the as if you'd lose the ring. You'd never lose that ring. No. No mm. way, man. Mm. And and then and then Thorin is buried with the uh, with the Arkenstone. Oh yeah, that's important. Um what did it do? What did it do? Yeah. It's really nice. You didn't think it was nice? I mean, I did think it was nice, yeah. <laughs> Do you think it would send you mad? With how nice it is? Yeah. I would reckon I'd be above it all, actually. you take it to, like, a cash converter and maybe get 600 bucks for it or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for Trade sure. Trade it yeah. for a PlayStation Put it on five. eBay or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I reckon I wouldn't I wouldn't be driven mad by it, and I reckon I wouldn't be corrupted by the ring. Yeah. I reckon I'd just hold it, the ring in my hand, I'd take it in Mount Doom, I'd chuck it in, you know? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. And if anybody's tried to stop you on the way, just be like... I'd slay him. Oh, would you? Yeah, with a sword, I reckon. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Okay, well, that's cool. Anyways, before (laughs) we talk about the original version, uh, let's talk green trivia, Mason. Yeah, let's do it. Billy Boyd. 
Who died? Played, uh, he played one of the original Hobbits. Nice. Uh, he was Mary and or Pippin Mason. That's terrific. Uh, I he, love Mary and or Pippin. I agree. He co-wrote and sings the song The Last Goodbye over the credits. It's lovely. I agree. Uh, this is actually Christopher Lee and Ian Holmes' final movie. Christopher Lee, of course, passed away in 2015 at age 93 and uh, Ian Holm in 2020 at age 88. Oh, good runs. Stunning innings. Between them, they killed a whole bunch of Nazis. So they did, didn't just they? Just fun. Together? No, I don't know. I think it was mostly Christopher Lee. I'm just averaging it out. <laughs> okay, sure. Well, I guess between me and Christopher Lee, we've also killed a bunch of Nazis, right? Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the elk on which Lee Pace rides, uh, it's actually played by a horse named Moose. Makes sense. Yep, yep, yep. Horrible as well. I don't think we've really circled back to the... Elves in general, get fucked. Awful. You don't like them? No! They're Why? rude and hoity-toity in their stupid cloaks and their long hair. I don't like him, Mason! Oh, this is great. Uh, you probably remember this, but when Vigo Mortensen kicked the helmet uh, in the two towers, you've probably seen this footage, mm -hmm. he actually broke his toe in the process, but he stayed in the scene in doing that. So that scream is real. That scream where he screamed, Blue Harvest. That was <laughs> the real anger and pain that he was feeling. And because of that, that became, those words, Blue Harvest, became the working title for not only the original Star Wars, but also this movie, Mason. That's great stuff. Isn't it just? Uh, the dummy, the Gandalf dummy that's being carried. Remember oh, that? Oh, sure, when... Uh, when uh, Gladriel's like... Just, just picks him up like he's a... God damn, I'm strong. Look mm -hmm. at me. She's yeah. strong as, mate. Mm -hmm. And I think she's got the ring powers or whatever. Not the ring ring, like the, the, the girl from the ring. You know? Oh, I see. Sure, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. The dummy was actually called Michael Gambon. Because he plays the other wizard in those other movies. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and I don't know if you saw this as well. There's some behind-the-scenes footage of uh, Legolas, as played by the guy who plays Legolas. Are you familiar with the Hobbits of uh, going to Isengard theme or whatever? Um, Hobbits are going to Isengard or whatever. Absolutely it's, it's not. It's like a techno remix. Absolutely not, no. Anyway, it was a thing for a time and he sings it. They've taken the Hobbits to Isengard. That's terrific. Let's talk about the Guillermo del Toro version, Mason. Okay, now this he, is the one that he was going to do, but then he's like, ah, nuts to this. He was going to do it so much that he put in 18 months of pre-production. But then he left. He said, mm. I can't do this anymore. This is taking too long. But I think that's not true. I think his vision of what it was clashed with what the studio wanted and he was thrown out. Interesting. Uh, I, I suspect because there's mm. a whole lot of politicking behind all of this, Mason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked a bit about it with the union stuff and whatever. Mm. And Peter Jackson came on board potentially to keep these movies in New Zealand a whole lot of things going and, on. And GDT would have just wanted to make all the characters real yucky. That's right. Yeah, that's what he does. He makes all the... Sticky and makes yucky. Makes everybody sticky and yucky. All their eyes are on their hands and yeah, whatever. Right, yeah, right. And vice yeah. versa. Exactly. Uh, so his original plan was for a single movie, a single The Hobbit movie, if you can imagine such a thing. I cannot at this point, no. And then a movie that bridges The Hobbit to Lord of the Rings. Oh. Uh, then it became An Unexpected Journey and There and Back Again. Two movies. Uh, the first one would have chronicled Bilbo's full adventure, the whole thing, uh -huh, uh -huh. from when he leaves his house to when he gets knocked out and then it's over or whatever. Uh, oh, so skip the, skip the army stuff. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, right, right. Just a black title card that said, then there was a battle you would not have believed it. <laughs> you would have shit bricks. And the next one would have covered Gandalf's adventures. So you know he does his little side mission. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So that makes sense. And the idea was also for him was it begins with like a golden age of Middle Earth and it slowly descends into the horrible kind of like sticky and yucky, sticky and yucky universe, which then morphs into the Peter Jackson I see. Lord of the Rings movies. Uh, also, some of his original casting was that he wanted Ian Holm to reprise the role. Fully, completely. Sure, sure, the sure. The entirety yeah. of mm -hmm. the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Blessed was also going to play Thorin. Oh, that would have been good. I, I kind of love that. I mean, I think Richard Armitage does a really good job, but uh, Brian Blessed, he was boss nass. That is true, yes. <laughs> uh, also would have been like more dwarves, you know? I don't know. We talked about the Lindsay Ellis videos last week where she spoke to one of them and they were so shoved aside that by the end they weren't invited to the premiere, the Los Angeles premiere. They were like, ah, oh, we can't fit you in there. Sorry. Oh, wow. Even though you're in, you're in these movies. So one of them reached out on Facebook and was just like, hey, sorry to all the fans. We're not going to be there. And then the studio quickly turned around and was like, hey, what are you so rude for? Fine, you can come, I guess. And then nobody talked to them apparently. So mm. That's fun, isn't it? Nobody no, in the studio. I, I think should... it's not fun. Yeah, I agree. So I don't know. I think studio interference wrangled Peter Jackson into this. They strong-armed him into it, and then they very slowly wrestled it away from him and, like, stretched it out. 
I assume, right? Mm. And I think in doing so, it just broke him because he hasn't directed a movie since. Like he's done like a, a few documentaries. He did that Beatles thing recently. That's right. But he hasn't done a project. He certainly hasn't done a Hobbit movie since then, has he? <laughs> no, he hasn't. And that was that was his that was his life's passion. <laughs> Endlessly doing Hobbit movies for <laughs> such a long time. Apparently, Amazon very briefly got in touch with him about the the new show, <laughs> and then they just stopped. Hello, Peter. This is Amazon. Click. <laughs> Well, that was brief. <laughs> they, they told us he would be brief. So, yeah, obviously that didn't end up happening. But I guess the question is to you, Mason. Mm, go on. Um, was this worth it? You know, it's 250 plus days of shooting, at least as long as The Lord of the Rings. They were made again in New Zealand mm. and it helps bolster, you know, their um, economy in terms of tourism. They made a fun little, you know, in-air safety video that they always do and Taika Waititi's in it and he's a yeah, wizard and right, whatever sure. you know and they get some they get some cast to come back and go ho ho Middle Earth and New Zealand and whatever is that worth it to you? Nah. No? Nah. Well what about this though? <laughs> Cost $250 million we're yes. talking box office Mason uh, but it only made $940 million, which is <laughs> slightly less than the last one but that's still nearly a billion dollars It sure is actually Obviously yeah. this was well worth their time yeah. and effort and splitting this into three was Financially, a smart decision. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, critically, the time that so many people have sunk into watching this or, say, editing a video together, Ben and Lawrence, maybe other people don't think it was necessarily worth it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Final thoughts? I oh, probably could have done without this one. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I reckon. Just the dragon bit and then... Or not even? Oh, yeah, no. Just imagine the destruction. That's, that's a power move, just to do the dragon bit. You, you go and you buy your tickets, you sit in the cinema and you're like, why is, why is there another session, like... 15 minutes after this, what's, what's going on? And then yeah. it just ends and it's like, yeah, we got that dragon, we got him good. <laughs> I probably would have gone to see the dragon bit for a half price ticket. I'll see that in cinemas. No, it's, a, it's, it's more than full price. No, ah, because they know you got to see it. I guess they do, don't they? <laughs> I remember sitting in the cinema watching this and just wanting to crawl out of my skin. Just, it just, Which bits? Just after the dragon dies. Oh, okay, and right. and then it just keeps going and going and going. And again, having read the book, a lot of this stuff is in the book. It's just way more interesting in a book. Because of the theatre of the mind? Theatre of the mind, I yeah. imagine. That's got a lot to do with it. Is the elf dwarf romance in the book? No. Yeah, I thought that'd There's be There's no interesting. women in those books, Mason. I mean, they mentioned some in passing. There's Gladriel. We've heard about women, they and say. The, and the one who kills the, the big flying mm. lizard ghost man. You know? Look, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to lean too heavily into gender stereotypes. But if there were any women involved, they'd be like, "Seriously, you're going on this trip? Are you serious? <laughs> just, do, just settle down. You don't need this freaking stone, all right? <laughs> yeah, you're probably just right. Watch the telly. Yeah, watch the telly. Yeah. Anyways, Mason, go on. Do you know this? I don't we, know yet. We have a podcast called The Weekly Planet. I did know that. Yeah, you can listen to it. It's pretty good, I reckon. Uh, and we have our own private Patreon called Big Sandwich where we do bonus things and early. There's early Very things. Very true. Uh, if you want a little taste of that, you can go, uh, we were on a little break uh, yeah. for the last month and we put some uh, we put some of those episodes into our regular podcast feed. So That's if you right. want to check those out, you can do that. Yep. Mm. Or you sign up. I just pay immediately. Sure, yeah. Don't <laughs> think about it. Just pay immediately. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Does everybody, though, want a hint for next week? I can't hear you. Uh, is it? <laughs> Does anybody? James, I, I there's, think there's, there's no one here. Have these shattered my perception of reality? Yeah, I'm not even really here. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, I, I, you, you called me up and you're like, Mesa, can you click? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anyways, okay, here's a hint towards the next week. Puny humans. People remember the Ang Lee Hulk more than the regular Hulk. Do you think so? The Incredible Hulk. Mm, interesting. Anyways, as mentioned, if you do want to see that early, bigsandwich.co. And let's all never talk about this ever again, all right? You let's think, all agree. You, th you think that's an option? How long do you think the window is before we have to start talking Hobbit stuff again? No, no, the discourse is around the, the newer thing. People hate that now, you know, or ups, upset about it. Yeah, that's true. At the risk of getting piled upon uh, from the episodes I've seen, I, I think it's pretty good. Why did I say that? Why did you, I say there's that? still the option to cut it out, James. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't, did I? No. All right, thanks, everybody. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. You know what? I, I, I My favourite part of this last movie, I think, is the bit where... Um, uh, Luke Evans, we're still recording. I don't know. <laughs> it's the bit where Luke Evans sees that his uh, his kids are uh, are in danger from the big the big orc kind of thing, and he's like, "I'm gonna roll a minecart at it." <laughs> hey, kids, duck! Yeah, duck. You, but you're taking a real big chance that they don't just go what and they're killed yeah, immediately, which is what a kid would do. A kid would absolutely do. What are you saying, Dad? What? I want ice cream. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. Ah, uh, goodbye, everybody. Bye. So much. Because it was real.
Thank you.